say something, I suppose, a little bit more uh, lighthearted and positive. Mm. We'd, we've discussed about uh, certain new technologies that are coming into play, how it's going to affect universal credit, for example. Within, the, say, I suppose, the next five years, is there any particular technologies that you think is, you use the word disruptive, mm. which we love on Disruptive Life, but is there any uh, technologies that you really think, wow, is going to change the way how the traditional construction industry, which is, as we mentioned before, it's quite conservative, it's quite old school in a lot of mm. lot of ways. We mentioned before that change is happening. There is a transition right now. Tell us a little bit more about your sort of technologies that you're working on right now and um, how you think it's going to change. Um, technology is always evolving, so there are new things around the corner every day. Um, and and sort of a positive from the UC side, if you're digitizing people, i.e. getting them into the digital world that haven't been there before, that opens up a lot of benefits to them. So being able to buy things online, uh, being able to look for jobs, being able to claim benefits, being able to get education online. There are a lot of positives in that digital world, but on the cutting edge side, we're now looking at Again, going back to sensor technology uh, and, and Wi-Fi technology, there's a lot of monitoring we can do to protect properties, to protect tenants. Um, we can also, and again, that can be their actual living conditions or security or um, monitoring children, etc. I don't mean baby monitors, but I'm on about, you know, is there a child going back to the house when everyone's out of the house instead of going to school, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, but you can also look towards the older uh, citizens. Um, you get to a situation now where people live in a house and whilst they slowly deteriorate, they get more and more care and then eventually they end up um, hospitalised or in a, a, a structured care system. We're seeing technology now that can actually prolong the length of time they can stay at home. And again, it's managing the care and being aware of what's going on. Um, we're involved with a project of, a, it's actually a product called Carantis. There are similar things out there, but Carantis has uh, IoT sensors around the house. It uses IBM's uh, intelli artificial intelligence architecture to monitor a person, their movements, what they do for a, say a month. And then after that, if they start to go outside of those parameters, it can create alerts. So you can leave that person alone without spying on them, without cameras or anything like that, nothing intrusive, but you can be aware, maybe if they've gone into the kitchen in the middle of the night and they're still there after an hour, that's the time to sort of create an alarm and not just to emergency services, but maybe a member of the family. Mm -hmm. So. The family member can either make a call. Well, it makes a lot of reassurance as well, doesn't Absolutely. it? For, for people, if you've got a, an, an elderly mother or, or dad or, or whoever, really, and they've, yeah. like you said, had a fall or something like that, I think it also takes yeah. a lot more stress off the emergency services if you can maybe... When they're not needed yeah. sometimes. Yeah. And that's stressful for older people, in particular my own mother. She's 90 mm -hmm. and she's early stage dementia and 99% of the time she's absolutely fine. It's the times during the middle of the night, she has a current old fashioned care system that she presses a button and the next thing the ambulance turns yeah. up. She doesn't need the ambulance, she's quite aware, but she couldn't remember my number or the speed dial or whatever. Well, it sounds like it's time but for you to get a, a smart house it's for your... Going in. <laughs> As we speak, it's going in. And, and just to add what Paul said then, um, you know, if you, if you were to ask me what the real disruptor is going to be, it's, it's AI. Artificial mm -hmm. intelligence, you know, it's mm. acting off the back of the sensors here to improve the way in which things are done. It, it's working 24 hours a day. It's uh, it's making decisions that often are fairly menial, and, and other people don't want to, and people don't often want to make. Um, there are the, the stats at the moment are that they believe that by 2022, so that's only what three years away now, 30% um, of, of jobs will be replaced by automated AI type type technology. Now, some people are quite afraid of that and say, well, what about my job? Mm -hmm. But um, you just think about it for a moment. Let's just apply this to social housing. Um,
study information and, and management stats to improve the service that they're offering. They're, they're liberated to, to look out for missed revenue opportunities or develop new revenue opportunities. There is a whole host of things that are higher value tasks that people can be liberated to do. So it's not something we should be afraid of. And, uh, you know, we going back 20 years, they all said we'd be out of jobs because they'll be replaced yeah. by computers. It hasn't happened. Yeah, I shouldn't be afraid of it. There's always going to be that with automation, I think, isn't there, where there's going to be, at the end of the day, a human which is going to be able to make that final decision. Yeah, absolutely. So quickly, uh, I know you just said it there, but what if you had to choose one technology that you think, wow, it's really going to hit the market, I'm going to ask you both, go with you first, Colin, which uh, you think is going to disrupt housing industry. I know you kind of just mentioned it, but give us one. Okay, I'll maybe add to that voice. Um, so I think within the next couple of years, there is going to be far more... Uh, voice interaction with the internet, then there is keyboard-based interaction, and add uh, artificial intelligence to that, I think uh, it's going to uh, allow us to address all kinds of social problems. Great. And Paul? I'm bound to say sensor technology because I'm living <laughs> and breathing it every day, um, but I can see the benefits, and we're just the tip of the iceberg. We're bringing data back, lots of different parameters, and we're adding to that on a weekly basis. So. We're including things like atmospheric pressure, weather systems, uh, including demographic data. Um, we've only just scratched the surface and eventually we'll have greater pictures of people and their properties, uh, which enables us to make better decisions and more strategic decisions. Great stuff. Gentlemen, thanks for joining me today. Um, I think it's been a, a great first episode of Tech in the House. So, uh, yeah, thanks very much for joining Pleasure. us. Thank you. Join us next time for another Tech in the House where we'll be discussing even more interesting topics with the technology in the housing industry. We'll see you then. Bye.